Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the Halal in Travel Global Travel Summit organized and presented by Crescent Rating. Today, we have with us several members of the key uh, industry players, including Paedi Kusmadi, from President of ASEAN Tourism Forum, ASEAN Tourism Association, sorry. We also have Mr. Eugene Yap, President of the Association of Restaurant and Hotels Philippines, Ms. Pauline Suharno, Director of Elok Tours Indonesia, and also newly elected President of Astindo, the Indonesian Travel Association, and also my old good, good old friend, Samson Tan, who is also Treasurer for FATA and Chairman Inbound for NATA Singapore. Thank you very much, panelists, and welcome to the session. Ladies and gentlemen, the COVID-19 impact has created a disaster for the travel industry. Many, many, many players in the industry have gone, have succumbed to the devastation, including airlines, hotels, and also uh, travel agencies. Some airlines have been forced to ground, to be grounded. Hotels have been forced to go belly up. And you know, as you know, quite a lot of travel agencies have, have been forced to let go staff and retrain staff, and, and many have already gone into bankruptcy. The 2020 international arrivals were down by 75% as compared to 2019. And as expected, 2021 will be even a worse year. Tra industry experts forecast that pre-COVID travel will only come back in 2023. That will leave us still another year and a half to worry about what's going to happen. On a more positive note, the recent development and recent movement by various governments have given us some, some form of optimism. Countries have been pushing hard for, for, for vaccination uh, and some borders are beginning to open. Most recently, as you have heard, Thailand, Phuket have opened and also I think Indonesia is looking at opening Bali, Bintan and also Batam. And in Singapore, we are actually pushing very hard to have our 80% of our, our population being vaccinated. Now, as you know, some countries have got challenges in getting the vaccination in place, and some are lucky enough to, have, to be able to achieve the numbers. But looking at what's happening, we would expect that with the vaccination variation and the vaccination, there'll be a lot of countries that we have challenges in catching up. My question to you, with this so-called variance in the, in the vaccination speed, how do you see countries, countries in ASEAN catching up and how does ASEAN as a group uh, can help all the countries kind of open up the borders at the same time? Anybody would like, can I just ask properly a president of ASEAN? How do you see, how do you see ASEAN making the, uh, playing the, what, leveling the playing field in putting together and, and assuring that, that countries can open up the borders pretty much the same time or, or catching up with one another? As you know, Singapore may be ahead, Indonesia may be behind, Thailand may be ahead. So how do you balance it up from an ASEAN standpoint? Uh, thank you, Pai Ismail, for your question. I think that is a tough question if you want to really see everyone at the equal pace, because that's the challenges that we have, not only within ASEAN, but also in the world. There's a, still a gap between developed and developing country in terms of vaccine distribution which I think now WHO has already undertaken several initiatives to really try to push further for distribution fashion to a developing country. And in ASEAN itself, there is a number of initiatives that are taking place, including the recent ASEAN Minister of Health declaration that they want to have self-reliance or vaccination within ASEAN itself. But again, when coming back into your question on when or uh, how this can be really uh, in the equal or level playing field for all, I think it would depend on each country preparedness. For sure, that that is the, the fact now. Um, if I see, the, if I check the current situation, for example, only Singapore and Cambodia that is higher than average, world average in terms of vaccination, while the other eight country is still below world average. So I think that's the fact that we have to face within this situation. So in here, what we can do from here is actually to open step by step. Meaning like, for example, now you have pocket sandbox as an example. 
uh, for us to learn on how the opening between this current pandemic. Then second later, maybe in, when Indonesia is ready, maybe Bali can open uh, within certain uh, market, within certain condition. Then later maybe uh, Cambodia with Siem Reap. Then Vietnam and Phukong. So I think that will be a step by step. I foresee that this is the situation that we have within 2021. Uh, 2022 maybe more opening will taking place, but I think on how we can push it is really uh, the effort is really up to the uh, individual government on how they can get the vaccine uh, as soon as they can, as well as, of course, regional initiative to to support that distribution of vaccine within ASEAN country. I think currently that's what I'm looking at at the regional level. Thank you, Paris. Uh, Samson, Singapore is by far one of the most success, successful story in getting vaccination uh, up to speed. And I think recent announcement by Dr. Ong, Mr. Ong Ye Kang is that Singapore is looking at probably relaxing the borders. Uh, how do you see, uh, with the relaxation of the borders, uh, uh, what do you think will be the next step of uh, next course of action that Singapore or you as a travel agent would hope, especially an inbound operator, would hope to see the government do to attract visitors? I think for inbound be it Singapore or any country or any destination, the most important uh, method is to uh, get everybody vaccinated in a certain zone. Let's say, for example, if Singapore is small, you can get the whole country vaccinated. Uh, for example, if you talk about Indonesia or Philippines, you get uh, one uh, Boracay for international tourists to go into Boracay and go back without having to quarantine, then you've got to get Boracay, whole Boracay to be vaccinated. Right? So when, and to prove to the overseas uh, government that that the whole country, that the whole city in Boracay is vaccinated and, and your people go back, uh, they do not they, uh, need to be quarantined. So that is the, the, the quarantine part is, is the most crucial part. Actually, like you, you can see for Phuket now, uh, there are only certain markets that go to Phuket. Why, why not at the whole world? Because, for example, China, if, if Chinese go to Phuket when they go back to China, they still need to do the quarantine. 14 days in the, in the, the city they, are, they land, and another 14 days when they go back to their own city, not their own hometown. So total of 28 days. So it's very hard for tourists to accept the count. So in order for as for, for, for Singapore is or for even Bali, whatever what but I did just say it's easier to open. Open is easier, is is easy, but to bring the tourists is also very easy. But if they come or not, if they go back they need to do the quarantine, then then I don't think you get a lot. So I think it's a chicken and egg thing. We really need to um, take both hands to clap. So, wherever we do, uh, whatever you call like our Mr. Koi Air Bubble, Travel Bubble, or Travel Connector, or Corridor, or whatever, the yeah. important thing is both country needs to agree that if I allow your tourists to come to my country, or you allow my tourists to go to your country, then when they go back, they do not need to go. Uh, vaccination, uh, I mean, uh, to get vaccinated now, uh, vaccinated tourists, uh, so called now, we call it the new normal, vaccinated tourists. Vaccinated tourists is, is going to be a key word now moving forward. Whoever going to open the the, the the city for tourists, you need to accept only vaccinated tourists. So I think moving forward is a chicken and egg thing. Uh, we need to start to quickly tie up with each other, even intra-ASEAN. So, if let's say, for example, uh, Singapore and Indonesia, for example, let's say, talk about Bali or Batam. Then Bali and Batam got to be fully vaccinated. Then the government needs to really prove it. Then both both countries need to prove that they are, they are really vaccinated. Then they start to exchange, right? They start to start to move. Then that is the way to go. Or even uh, come 
to a part where certain place very specific. Like for example, um, uh, even for example in the Kuala Lumpur, maybe you only vaccinate uh, tourists. There will be a tourist. You can create even a tourist zone within uh, this uh, 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 in the heart of Kuala Lumpur, right? You can or even Genting alone. It's all vaccinated. Then people from airport straight to Genting come back to airport and then leave. So that is where, as long as quarantine uh, requirement is not there, I think opening up uh, will be fast. Or else it's going to be very slow and it's going to take a long time. Uh, that's why yeah. I say. Uh, yeah. I agree. And I think, Pauline, if I understand correctly, recently Bali was almost ready to open. But from what I understand, they just locked it down again. <laughs> and maybe what Samson says is also true. Perhaps maybe each government should look at isolating the destination. I don't know. How do you think? What What do you think? Because the, I, from what I understand, Batam and Bintan, they also look at only opening certain areas in Batam, which is Nongsa area and Bintan maybe Lagoy area, and uh, that's probably a good start. But from your from your standpoint as a tour operator in Indonesia, do you think that would be the right thing to do to to pick and choose the destination first? Yes, I would agree. I think that it should be the same uh, low risk uh, destination. So say like uh, Bintan, Bali, and then uh, from Thailand, we can go to Phuket, then maybe Boracay. Uh, then I heard uh, that Langkawi also wants to open uh, that area for the vaccinated tourists. But first, I would like to add what Pak Edi said about the fairness, the level, the playing field. If we are talking about the fairness, same rule of game. Actually, ASEAN countries should start with the common standard for the travel restrictions. Correct. Digital travel passport, new normal tour operation guidelines, hotels and restaurant cleanliness and health measures, common quarantine period, and also the compulsory travel insurance. What Pak Edi said is just now, developed and developing countries have the different standard. For example, you know, this is one thing that always made our travel consultant got headache. Nowadays, when people need to travel abroad, they need to show the PCR test result, right? You know, different country, different airlines have their own criteria. For example, our national carrier, Garuda, only approve certain health clinics and hospitals. And the PCR result must show the barcode which link to our EHEC, the electronic health alert card system. Yeah. While Cambodia, as a country, would only accept the PCR test result with the original signature and clinic's company stamp. And not only that, Singapore Airlines in Indonesia only will accept results not only from certain clinics, but also designated branches. Hmm. And also, the, uh, each ASEAN countries develop their own digital travel passport application. Singapore has the safe travel, Indonesia has peduli lindungi, and Malaysia has uh, Malaysia Sejahtera. So why don't we actually uh, in the ASEAN region encourage our own government to use the worldwide known application like Ayata Travel, pa Travel Pass. I think it's easier say like when we want to make ASEAN as a single safe destination, uh, safe destination, then when I travel to Singapore, when I travel to Indonesia or to Philippines, to Malaysia, we don't need to uh, download so many applications like that. No, I agree with you. I think maybe you, what, what you're saying is that ASEAN needs to be on a common ground. That means everybody sharing the same policies, the same standards, the same this thing. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, I like to hear from Eugene from the hotel standards. I believe every every country got their own so-called uh, cleansing processes. Every, every country has got their own uh, sanitizing processes. Do you think this is a headache for the tourists and the hotel operator? Uh, thank you, Mohamed, for the question. Um, both hotels and restaurants industry are having a hard time because, as you know, um, the tourists really, uh, we do not rely only on domestic tourists, but also international tourists. The concept of, um, we're, we're now beginning to accept and hopefully, uh, you know, worldwide, we'll be willing to accept the um, principle of learning to accept or live with COVID-19. It means that, uh, COVID-19 pandemic, or at least it won't be a pandemic, but it will be, uh, the risk pandemic. will be lowered down now. 
and we'll be uh, accepting it as part of uh, probably ordinary flu, etc. As long as we follow certain uh, health protocol, um, we, as you know, uh, we would prefer. Uh, we are encouraging the government and we're pushing the government for international travel. Uh, at least on the domestic travel, it has been done already. Uh, in the Philippines, for example, uh, we are now accepting uh, vaccination, uh, local vaccination identification as a safe pass already for interzonal uh, travel. travel. So we will see how it goes. Um, if it's uh, probably uh, just neighboring cities or provinces, that would work. And hopefully uh, it will spread all throughout the Philippines. In the ASEAN, um, we really need to come up with um, an acceptance, a collaboration of the same health protocols that is being observed in one country, exactly the same, to be uh, accept, uh, to be observed also by other countries. And that's so that we, we human beings, we react on the same uh, virus, et cetera, right, so right. if we are vaccinated, we, there will be less risk for us to travel. Um, in the industry, tourism industry, it's really about traveling, going around. It's not only uh, domestic travel, but also international travel. So we're, 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 we're really pushing for that uh, travel. Domestic travel has uh, begun, uh, I think, in many ASEAN countries, in the Philippines also. Um, you've mentioned earlier that probably uh, there will be more picked up by year 2023. Uh, that may be uh, the, the realistic view. But here right now, the practical view that we're looking for is hopefully the government will allow more travel for 2021 with hopefully with some samples of international travel yep. by the fourth quarter of this year, if that's possible. So that would set as a template for year 2022 uh, to get ready for 2023. You know, Mohammed, we have to start from somewhere. Oh, and yes, yes, I This agree. year, we have to really push it, and I hope the government will lessen the restrictions with all uh, vaccinations. Uh, and in, we have the Ayata Pass, and we have our own local pass already. If it's being accepted, that would be good for all. Thank you, Mohammed. No, I, I agree with you because I think we cannot afford to wait till 2023. And I think I see some signs that things are also making a turn for the better, if not last Q4 this year, maybe Q1 next year, you see. But from what I hear from all of you, I, I can understand that there is a need for ASEAN to come together. There's a need for ASEAN to, to, to form sort of a standard SOP for ASEAN and uh, probably it, it, to, to encourage uh, every government or every, every country to accept the standards or, or come up with a standard. But let me ask you this from a standpoint of ASEANTA. Would ASEANTA as a body be, a, or rather for the matter, I, uh, as, a, as, a, as an association that represents the travel travel or tourism industry, would, would ASEANTA have the capability to present this to the government and maybe provide the government, the, the, the ASEAN Secretariat with a so-called SOP that may apply for ASEAN as a whole. Uh, if I may, but Eddie, you, you were in the ASEAN Secretariat before. Maybe, and I believe I've met you before even on, on setting standards for the workforce in the past. Is there something that maybe COVID is something that we can learn where ASEAN could probably establish its own ASEAN SOP, for instance? And then maybe with that, that could be the start of maybe an intra-ASEAN travel, allowing people within ASEAN. And let's not forget, with the economies getting screwed up over the years, the Europeans have been hit pretty badly. So we may not be able to help a lot of uh, long-haul travelers into ASEAN, ASEAN for that matter. So our dependency will probably change to ASEAN, intra-ASEAN travel. And if I recall correctly, intra-ASEAN travel is something that, I, Pauline, correct me if I'm wrong, we propagated it a few years ago, if I'm right. So so it, would COVID-19 be the excellent opportunity to do this? You know, I'd like to hear from the airline's perspective, from the hotel's perspective, and from the travel perspective from, from all of you. Maybe, Paidi, you would like to start that? Hey, thank you, Pa Ismail. I think with regard to ASEAN, um, I think ASEAN has already been in consultation since the beginning of this pandemic. We actively communicate uh, through the committee or through the ASEAN Secretariat in passing through all our recommendations. 
uh, of course, this kind of intra-ASEAN has been recognized by all. Like for example, uh, intra-ASEAN travel in past 10 years usually account about more than 44% Correct. from total arrival within ASEAN. So if we have in 2019, we have 136 million, uh, we have around 60 million coming from ASEAN itself, Correct. which is quite quite big. Very yeah. Market. yeah, very significant. And we also understand that within the close neighbor and of course, presidents from the European Union, for example, the close neighbor is actually the easiest uh, uh, source of market that we can tap on because we understand the, the market better not only, of course, from the industry point of view, but also from the government point of view. So in regard to this, actually, within the summit 2020, the government or the leaders already declared the ASEAN Travel Corridor Arrangement, which I think that's one of that we are expecting it can be done within very short period. So it was in November 2020. Uh, 2020. Then, in April 2021, there is another summit of ASEAN leader. And by that time, the terms of reference for that travel corridor arrangement has not been done. Then when we ask when this travel corridor arrangement would be completed, in terms of um, SOP, then some of the official mentioned it will be targeted in the next coming summit, which is October. This year, so you can imagine how long the process just to develop an SOP oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. within ASEAN to have to support ASEAN itself. And I said, why it takes so long? Uh, because I think industry is desperately need at least if you have kind of clear SOP or clear terms of reference, we understand what is our situation now and how we can really achieve that situation expected within terms of reference. And that thing is not yet completed, and we have only in consultation with them. Uh, currently, the the uh, lead country for this arrangement currently is Indonesia. So I'm quite close contact with Ministry of Foreign Affairs of Indonesia to push how, how this kind of initiative. One thing that we are already pushing or suggesting, strongly recommend, is actually to facilitate the travel, because currently we can admit even we close the border. There are already international uh, traveler coming in, be it is essential travel or business limited or even diplomatic. So they are already there. And in airline, we are facing difficulties because so many uh, fake credentials, especially on the health, mm -hmm. that we have to deal with because of the situation. So they said in the credential is negative, PCR result, but when we check at the arrival, it's positive. So this kind of issue has been there for months already. And even now, we still open for international, and we still operate for international. But this kind of issue is still a daily thing that we are dealing with. So now we are suggesting for, like for example, Pauline mentioned, Ayata Travel Pass, for example, as one of the measures that we suggest. At least this can help one application Minimize. that all. But of course, again, I think we have to add more, more uh, clinics that have been included within the Travel Pass. And again, we have already recommended to the task force that preparing the travel corridor arrangement, but at the same time, we are also open for any application that could also do the same thing, for example. So I think that's one of the recommendations that we have already submitted to them and we closely monitor. We are asking for them to actually to complete these terms of reference even before October. So we can understand on how the, the, the agreement among ASEAN countries on certain procedure that we have to follow so as we can achieve that situation as soon as we can. I think that's uh, one part that currently we are doing in terms of ASEAN time. To do the consultation even this afternoon we have consultation again and on today's time we have consultation with uh, uh, national tourism organization of asia right so asianta is actually playing a very critical role in all this and it's good to see that you guys are actually engaging the government and from what you hear i can understand that maybe 
the reason why there's a delay in, in putting all this together is because the situation of COVID is still moving up and down, up and down. And, you know, they, they want to, being government, I suppose they want to play it safe, you see. Uh, you know, Pauline, you, got, you, you know, what do, what do you think? You, do you think ASEAN is, is doing enough? ASEAN as a group, I won't, I'm not saying ASEAN, but ASEAN as a group is doing enough to stimulate because like what Pai Edi says, out of 136 million, 44% is generated from ASEAN. That's a huge market that you cannot ignore. Well, and, actually, yeah. yeah, I what I heard from, uh, from the media, from Pai Edi as well, uh, already certain, uh, already few of ASEAN tourism minister countries uh, meetings happened and then they agreed with the joint statement that consists of seven points of mutual agreement. By that time, our Vice Minister of Tourism, Ms. Angela, fully committed together with all the ASEAN countries of tourism, uh, uh, the, the ASEAN countries to encourage a shared vision of mitigating and recovering the tourism sector, both during and after the pandemic. And of course, including the long-lasting forever vision, ASEAN as a single tourism destination. destination but, yes. Yeah, but I believe each government has been busy implementing everything they are able to do, all their best strategy to overcome the COVID-19 crisis economic stimulus package to provide incentive or boost the tourism business such as the tax deduction, relaxation of the existing regulation, which subsidy programs to assist employers to retain the employees. And now actually Indonesian travel agents are waiting for the government to pour the grand fund tourism. After last year, they gave it to the hotels and restaurant. Uh, I think all the government now uh, are trying their best to help themselves first before go to ASEAN. Okay, uh, Eugene, we hear that a lot of hotels have been forced to close their door and uh, thousands have lost their jobs. And I think similarly, Samson, travel agents, a lot have also uh, went belly up. And what is happening, if I understand correctly, in the last 20 months or so, everybody is waiting for the government's handout. And, you know, some government may have deep pockets, some government may not have. Malaysia, for one, I think they, they may not be able to support this thing any longer. But the unique thing about Malaysia is I noticed that Penang, on its own, has done wonderful for themselves. They've actually cleaned up Penang pretty well, and I think their numbers are very low. And uh, I don't know, maybe, maybe like, like we suggested earlier, they should probably run and run their own their own campaign and, and, and run it individually on their own. And, uh, you know, that's that's one way to look at it. But from an ASEAN spe uh, perspective, yes, I agree. The government is taking too long. But do you think the hotel can probably, as an ASEAN body, ARA perhaps, could, could, could come up, you know, ARA, uh, FATA, and also the airline association, put together a total SOP from the ASEAN perspective and sell it to the government. The reason why I say this is because, yes, the government are busy managing the population facing the pandemic, but tourism is private sector driven. And you guys are the private sector that drives the business. Do you, do you agree that probably ASEAN or ASEAN Thai as a whole could be taking a more proactive approach in putting together the, the so-called SOP? rather than waiting for the government to come and share with this among the leaders. Eugene, what do you think from the hotel's perspective? Okay, um, thank you, uh, Mohammed. Um, we, we in the private sector are most affected on this, uh, uh, on this pandemic um, because yeah. it is our livelihood and the private sector and the tourism industry really carries the uh, brunt of sufferings, but at the same time, if done right, if we go back to uh, normalcy and we go back to our own, uh, back to regular businesses, then we will benefit uh, the people a lot. And uh, we, we, that's why we're still trying to push the government and they have to realize also, the government do realize and we have to make them realize more that um, this, this uh, they cannot, uh, hopefully they did not carry on uh, subsidizing the welfare of the people that we in the private sector must rise on our own and must continue to rise. So we in the Ashanta, we're grouped together and then we delegate ourselves, we segregate ourselves into our own government. We've been pushing through it. Yes, I'd love Ashanta to take an 
active role as a group and going around into different go- governments just to just to push them for for lessening the restrictions and encouraging uh, the opening up. Uh, it is our livelihood and it is our survival. Right now, we are still doing um, survival mode uh, in the hotel and restaurant businesses. And I'm sure other sectors are also suffering the same way or experiencing the same way. Now, we encourage the government to, to continue listening to the, us, the private sector. And of course, you know, um, uh, the coffers of the government, the taxes that we pay, uh, the, the, um, all the cost of duties when we import, we pay to the government is a lot of money. So the government will have to uh, reconsider the positions and act quickly uh, together with, uh, with us in the private sector, sector, especially with Ashanta at its helm. Thank you, Mohammed. Sure. Uh, Samson. How do you see Singapore's return? I mean, we are already going into what they call it, like you said, it's a new norm. And uh, and uh, like it or not, humanity has to learn to live alongside the COVID-19. But that said, how do you think the inbound business will, will, will uh, what you might, how do I say, uh, how do you think the inbound operators uh, will deal with this or, or handle this? I think now the the for inbound for inbound every uh, the operators are actually doing their own uh, domestic tours here and there. Uh, they are just waiting for the reopening. But having said this, uh, uh, talking about this asset thing, I think uh, we should come up with a task force ourselves and get the. Uh, Every government to have a representative in the in the task force, and maybe they can out, outsource this task force as so-called emerging stronger task force, uh, emerging ASEAN emerging stronger task force. So we're going to emerge stronger uh, together, and and when we have this task force, right, all these ASEAN secretariat we consider. To outsource this task force for us to manage it and then get all the government to come in with the So we can put all the protocols like what Pauline say, all the protocols together, all the paths together, and then they go back to their own history to get it uh, endorsed and come back to us. And this is where we can start. Now, uh, uh, a task force, because as you said, uh, Ismail, all the government are busy with their own a pandemic problem. Uh, they may not have resources. No, and I and I and I think if I, if I may just interject there, and yeah. I think that from from the government standpoint, they would also welcome uh, participation from the private sector. Exactly. You know? and, and 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 you know, to me, I mean, I may be wrong here, but to me, you I guys are the, are, the, are the experts that will be able to to put together the protocol. You know what your customers or what your passengers will need. I mean, Eddie, you're from the airline airline aspects. You know what protocol need to be in place on, on the aircraft prior to check in everything. And you know the rest of you guys from the travel agency perspective, uh, from the arrival to the bus to whatever, whatever and all that. And I think uh, Eugene, from the hotel's perspective, it's pretty clear. What are the sanitation processes and all that? I'm not sure, but if my, my thoughts are this, if I, like and I agree with Samson, if if Asianta could probably propose to the to the to the ASEAN Secretariat that let Asianta take over informing the task force to put together the whole uh, uh, SOP that is commonly accepted among the ASEAN countries, that would be a good start. What do you think? Um, I, any, think any thoughts, uh, I think to me it would be good if we could have that access. Of discussion, uh, but somehow I've been in ASEAN almost 18 years uh, before. Uh, this participation is always limited. There, are, there, tend, there tend to be closed door consultation among countries, government, and after that they come up with something uh, afterward, and which somehow can be accepted or many times cannot be accepted also on the output. And on other thing is. The execution part is all is also another part which somehow is also delayed in terms of in terms of execution of whatever 
uh, initiative that has been agreed among ASEAN countries. Uh, so I think it will really depend on how they can really open that door for us to really join in. Because basically, if we are invited or if we have already put a request for us to do consultation, for example, like in the coming, uh, in, in, in the declaration that has been issued by the minister, they said that exchange of information between private sector and government should be there. I mean, they should support, they support it. But the way we really do the consultation is quite limited. Only within our session that can be presenting and listen. After our session pass, or they discuss another thing which might relate it with, say, for example, this travel corridor arrangement, then we are not there because we are not in the session. I think that's that's the, the thing that currently is working within Asia, which I think I is. Notice, I noticed Pauline is smiling. She probably have a few things to say as well, Pauline. <laughs> I think I that's the challenge. <laughs> Yeah, I understand for that. I think it's actually easier to be the FATA and ASEATA members. That's what I really love and enjoy from being the FATA members, ASEATA members, is the discussion and sharing information among the ASEAN travel associations. Yes. How each association get the privilege, benefit, first aid kit from the from the government. It gave us actually a glimpse of direction and benchmark. I always remember what Mata taught Asino to do: just create the media noise easier rather than consultation with the government then you will never get anything sometimes uh, i think in that area samson we are pretty lucky in that stb is more forthcoming am i right uh, yes yes actually stb uh they are forthcoming they are willing to push of course because singapore depend more on uh, town but i think uh, and having said that i think we should uh seriously con asian time may have a uh, we consider having a emerging form of emerging stronger task force and then we, try, uh, we push all our government uh, to get involved uh, instead of joining them we like what Pauline say like Mata said right <laughs> make the media noise first then go to the government I'm very sure we'll find a way to push to get a rep into our task force and we start to push uh, at least we are I think they will realize that we are, as what you guys said, we are the private sector, they still depend on us. Like, like uh, I was actually sitting on one of the task, Singapore uh, have a task force, have, have such task force and reason task force, and I was sitting in one of the the, 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 the section, you know, uh, one part of the committee, and, and I think it's, uh, we did pretty well. That's how we are very clear on move, what to move forward and what you know. So, this is what we need to do. And then, um, but as I said, Singapore a bit more forthcoming. Uh, you know, they, they, they will do what they need to do. I think for ASEAN, right, get everybody together, ready to maybe set up something like a task force like this, and then make a, a media noise and keep on pushing, uh, get everybody together. But I'm very sure out of 10 countries, if you get five or four, they sits in our task force and start to move then the four uh, start to inter exchange then the rest will come or else you will never get started you will never get started then we all be sitting and waiting and waiting we well, want things share, to move faster yeah. I just want that's to my thoughts here. Here. yeah i just want to share something here as well because you know there's the, the muslim muslim trip to, to mecca all the travel agents are now waiting to see what saudi is going to do but my take is that Saudi is also wanting to hear from this from the people that's coming in what is it that you want us to do so I think it works both ways in the sense that and I think in the interest of intra ASEAN travel and whatever and all that and I agree with Samson that maybe ASEAN should take a more proactive approach to this because I believe strongly that individually the industry like the hotels the travel agent the airlines you guys you guys have your own expertise I mean, may not be directly from Air Asia for that matter, but you have partner airlines that can provide the expertise when it comes to the airlines perspective. And I think similarly, Ara, Shah, Ma could get together. And I, Pauline, Fata, I'm sure you have enough enough uh, so-called experts, heroes that will probably be, been in the business long enough to put together the the the, the so-called SOP, to put together so-called the, the 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 proposals and all that. And you need a voice. 
And I'm sure that if ASEAN Thai as a whole comes as a voice, and they cannot they cannot ignore you. Yeah, for example, sorry, for example, if if Indonesia and uh, the members in Indonesia and the members in Singapore, for example, uh, come together and come up with that so you go back and push your government. We, and we are telling them that we all agree. Who are you guys waiting for? Take a look. You know, keep on pushing them, knocking the door all the time. I'm very sure it will work. So if Singapore and Indonesia open, then next will be Philippines and, and Malaysia. Or, you know, it keep on growing and spinning. We cannot get 10 countries to, together at one time. But at least we, as a as a body, a centre body, we have a task force. And then we get as many countries to get on, on board first. Keep the keep the, the ball rolling, opening, and then others will see. Because you know, Singapore is having a Hong Kong, uh, having a travel okay. corridor with Hong Kong. Why? It's not about it's not about leisure, it's more for business. Because Singapore and Hong Kong has many companies that they have to track in the travel. It's nothing about leisure, but more for business. But for us, we need the leisure part Correct. moving and also, right? And yeah, mice. and the mice. So we have to come together first, form a task force, call it emerging stronger, push it, move it, and then, then the government knock on their door. Whoever wants to join, I'm very sure, as I said, you get three or four countries to start, start to sit in and start to have this protocol and agree to the protocol and start to exchange no quarantine for a certain zone, whatever. Then we start to move. If we don't move, take this step, nobody will take this step. Because we run the business, we own the business. Yeah, I fully agree. Because you know why? It's probably a good start. Let's say, like what you say, Indonesia and Malaysia, perhaps the closest neighbors. You work together. Then maybe Philippines could work together with Cambodia for help to start off with, and then Singapore could work with you know, Bintan Batam as a start. And when they see that the system works, the SOP works, that's probably something that they will then eventually bit by bit you join in. The reason why I'm saying all this is, our numbers in Asia, although it's that big. It is not, I mean, the COVID numbers, although it's, it's, it's uh, so-called big in some countries, it is not as crazy as the countries in Europe and the USA. And yet you find US already opened their borders. Europe, most countries are already beginning to open their borders without quarantine. Australia, New Zealand, you see, look at Australia. When they see a city that's, that's, that's having a problem, they lock down only the city. But the rest of Australia is open. So you need, you, I think ASEAN, the, the member countries or other the government needs to start thinking the same way. Yes, isolate that city. Like Bali is the best bet to open. So work on Bali first. Because that's, that's your major tourist attraction. Like Philippines, Boracay. You know, like Thailand is smart. They started with Phuket. And you see yesterday's report, there are quite a number of flights and, and things are beginning to, 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 to happen. And, and you know, this is, the, this is the way to go. So, ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you so much for being here. And I'm sure this, this uh, sharing session has been very helpful and very fruitful. And I do hope that the people that are listening in, especially our friends in ASEAN, will, 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 will uh, pick it up and uh, take it from here and see what they, you know, what they can actually share with you guys and work hand in hand. At the end of the day, I think you and I believe that it is not your benefit, not my benefit. It's for the benefit of tourism as a whole. And, you know, the benefit of the millions of jobs at stake, the benefits of businesses at stake. I was very sad to hear yesterday, one of my favorite hotels in Kuala Lumpur just closed its doors, the Istana Hotel. You know, that, that, that place holds close history for me. I've got friends there who worked there for so many years. So once again, thank you so much for being with us.